داری چی کار میکنی الان؟ الان دارم درد همون میگم بازیگر نه بازی نمیکنم دارم حرف همون میزنم بازی نیست من فکر کنم که هنر اون تجربه است که انسان در درون خودش حس کرده Close Up is a film that came out in 1990 that's written and directed by Abbas Kierostami. So Close Up was this week's Patreon poll winner, and I was absolutely ecstatic that it finally won because I put Close Up on a number of different polls, and it's a film that I've been dying to see for quite some time. Ever since I really got into Abbas Kierostami, it's a film that I consider to be a must-see because a lot of people who have seen Kierostami films consider it to be one of his best. And um, so far, I've seen Taste of Cherry, great film. I've seen Where is the Friend's House, fantastic film. And it's been Certified Copy, which to me is a masterpiece. And so far, is my favorite Kirito Stami film. And by the way, I have an analysis and a review on Certified Copy. And I have a review on Taste of Cherry, so please check those out if you'd like. So with all that being said, it's kind of impossible to go into close-up with any kind of low expectation because just considering that I pretty much loved everything that he's made before that and hearing that this is kind of a favorite between amongst his fan base um it's hard to go into this with a reasonable expectation but even though my expectations were quite high going into this um it still met them and exceeded them in the best possible way that I could imagine because this film I found to be so special and just beautiful on so many different levels and what's incredibly unique about this film is that it's technically a documentary um but at the same time it's it's also a film but i would definitely lean more towards the fact that this is basically a documentary even as a whole i think it's a documentary it's about a man named hossein sabsian who is being put on trial for committing fraud in regards to impersonating a filmmaker and um, basically duping this more upper class family um, into thinking that he was a particular filmmaker. And he's put on trial for this offense and Abbas Kiridostami basically heard about the story and postponed the current film project that he was planning to work on at the time to kind of capture this moment and make a film out of it. And what he does in his film is basically film the trial where this man is given the right to speak and defend himself. And what we get is one of the most endearing, inspiring, and soulful love letters to cinema that I've ever seen put to screen. Because to me, it just expresses the amount of power and the gigantic impact that the art of cinema can have on a lower class citizen like Sabsian. Or really anybody for that matter, no matter where you land on the social class hierarchy. But I do love how this film specifically focuses on a real life person that is from the lower class and basically demonstrates what the kind of inspiration and appeal that the art of cinema can have on somebody like that. And I'll dive a little bit more into that later, but one thing we have to talk about that also makes this film incredibly unique is that, as I mentioned, not only is it a documentary where it focuses on all these real people that were involved in this trial, in this case, um, obviously including the main guy that's being committed for fraud, um, there are actual reenactments of certain things that happened in this film that are not only acted by certain people, but they're acted by people, all the people, I believe, that were directly involved in this case. So Sapsian in this film plays himself, and you know the victims of his crime also play their part in this film. And um, that's something that I've... I personally have never seen in a film. I'm sure there are films out there that have done this, but this was my first time being introduced to an approach to filmmaking like this. And um, it's it's a really interesting and thought-provoking experience because it truly does kind of blur the line between documentary filmmaking and just filmmaking in general. And it really made the film feel that much more authentic and that much more unique and special 
and um, really enhanced your experience in a way that it's quite difficult to put your finger on. And in regards to the main character of this film, the real life person that was committed of a crime, um, it's it's such an interesting relationship that the audience has with this character, at least for me personally, because he's somebody that has obviously done something that is wrong. Like, there's pretty much no denying that. But when you're watching and hearing this man speak in the courtroom, there's so much of the way he articulates why he did what he did and the way that he expresses his innermost feelings about not only the situation that happened, but his feeling towards art and the art of cinema itself. It just, it just resonates so much with you. And at least for me personally, it's, it's quite inspiring. And he just truly expresses what makes not only cinema, but art itself so special for not only him, but for a lot of people. I'm not going to lie. There was a moment in particular that got me quite teary-eyed and took every ounce of my soul to just bury all of it and pull it back and not start ball out crying like a little girl. And it's this one thing in particular that he says in the third act of this film where he says how incredibly lonely he felt when it came to his suffering and all the issues that he was going through in his life. He couldn't even call upon Allah, his God, to give him comfort in any way because he felt like even with him, he was incredibly alone. And it's not until you had this artist, this filmmaker that came along in his life where he felt like here's somebody that is truly understanding what I'm currently going through. Here's somebody that is truly understanding the type of suffering that I'm going through. Here's somebody that I can relate to and that just impacted me on a deep emotional level because it's something that I feel like a lot of people who truly love art um, also kind of have the same appeal to. And to a lot of people, art is a form of therapy. And even though sometimes, you know, it cuts deep and can make you feel very uncomfortable, if there's an artist out there that's able to demonstrate and express these complex emotional issues in a mature way um even though it can really hurt the viewer and kind of pierce their soul in a way um it's something that at the end of the day i think is a healthy thing for your mind because a lot of people can't really find anything that feels like they understand them and even therapy like actual therapy sometimes people just can't connect to that and sometimes art is there to do just that. And I think that's something that's quite special about art itself. And this film and this man, um, I feel like expresses the epitome of that and it's demonstrated beautifully. And the ending to this film is just, it's absolutely poetic and beautiful. And again, ways that I don't think I've really ever experienced in cinema. And I loved it so very much. And one thing about the film is that you don't really get that you don't really get very many stunning images in this film just because of the very nature of it. I believe the majority of this film takes place in the trial, in the courtroom. So just by nature, you wouldn't get the normal amount of stunning images that you would normally get in a Kira Dostami film. But the ending um, definitely delivers on that level. And not only is it just beautiful in terms of its visual aesthetic, but just in terms of the character and the real life story and how it unfolded is just, it's, it's pretty much unlike anything I've ever experienced. So one thing I will say about this film though, and perhaps it could change upon rewatch, but this film didn't have much of a hook in the beginning. And that's not really the case, at least in my opinion, with other Kyoto Stami films, um, with Taste of Cherry, a certified copy, um, Where's the Friend's House, all those films immediately get you hooked. And this film I felt like took maybe just a bit too long for it to get really interesting and to get really invested into what was happening. But really that's the only thing that stood out to me as something that I felt like could have been better with this film. But overall, I think that this film is so special. It's so unique. It's incredibly personal and I feel like it's going to resonate 
with everybody out there that not only loves filmmaking, but just has a gigantic love for art. So I'm going to give Close Up a solid 9 out of 10. And by the way, the man in this film, Sabsian, apparently he was planning to do another film with Kira Dostami, and he had a bad asthma attack, and then he was in a coma for, I believe, three or four months, and then he died at the age of 55 years old, and that is absolutely tragic to me. I mean, that is heart-shattering. So my heart goes out to Sabsian. Obviously, my heart also goes out to Kira Dostami. He passed away not even that long ago, and... It just sucks because I would love for this man to still be around and um, still giving his beautiful art to the world. But unfortunately, everybody has a death date and that's just something that we all have to come to terms with. But anyway, that's all I got to say about Abbas Kiridastami's close-up. If you really enjoyed what I had to say about the film, please give it a thumbs up and share it amongst your friends. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel to be updated on more film-related content.